Welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to not only make an ocean animation but how to also put any object of your choice on the water and have it automatically bob around on the water. So this is pretty much a floating tutorial showing you how you can float anything on an ocean. Not only am I going to show you how to do that, we'll also be setting up some materials and then when we're done with that we'll also go ahead and just do some compositing to really bring this all together in a really kind of cool way. So that we're looking a little bit at mist passes so we can add that sort of atmospheric effect in the compositing. Um, the only thing that's gonna be different, um, this is my original that you're looking at here, and you can take any object you want, the Suzanne monkey head, a cube, doesn't matter, your own boat model, and you can have it float on the water. You can do it to anything. I just so happened with my original to use this model over here, but in the tutorial, I'll just be using the Suzanne monkey head to demonstrate. But once again, you can go ahead and grab any object you want. I will explain in the end where I got this one, if this is what you want to use, but this is from Sketchfab. And there's full um, credit to the individual who made it in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, so yeah, that's it. Let's jump into this tutorial, learning how to float any object in Blender on an ocean that we're going to make ourselves. Jumping into a new scene in Blender, we're going to go ahead and select the default cube. Now today we're not going to be deleting it, but if you really wanted to, you know, stick with tradition, you can delete it and add it back in. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. So I'm going to go over to my modifiers tab. I'm going to go add modifier. I'm going to click on search and type in ocean. And then click here on the ocean modifier. And essentially that just turns this into an ocean. Um, pretty cool. So what we want to do here is work on some of these parameters. So we're going to start here by coming to the repeat Y and X. And let's grab both those values. Just make them two. So it's two over here and two over here. Then over here where it says resolution and render, let's make both of those 12. Um, depending on your computer's performance, um, you could always take the viewport level down. Um, but I'm just going to go with both of the same since my computer can handle it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to waves. We're going to make the scale two meters. We're going to make the choppiness 1.45. The alignment, we're going to make 0.5. And we now have a pretty cool looking ocean. But we want this ocean to be animated. So how are we going to do that? It's quite simple. We're going to come here to our timeline. And let's make sure that our slider here is in frame 1. And on frame 1, with the ocean selected, we're going to come here to the modifier. And we're going to come here to the time. And with a default value of 1 here, we're going to click on this little animate property. And it's going to go yellow. So we now have a keyframe for that. Let's go all the way up to frame 250. Now, obviously, you could adjust the length of the animation, but I'm going to use the full animation length here on a timeline. And I'm going to go over here and make this value 11. That is what I found works best with this sort of scale. And I'm going to go ahead and click on here. So that's on frame 250. And now that is yellow as well because I clicked on the animate property. Um, but what's happening here is we have this easing in and easing out on the animation curve. So it starts really slow, then goes faster, and then slows down. We don't want that because that's not realistic. So we're going to go ahead and drag and click, click and drag this like both these keyframes. And we're going to press T hovering over it. You're going to see all of these options here. We're just going to make the interpolation linear. So now it's consistent across the timeline. And that's what we're looking for. So this looks quite slow if you're looking at it. But and keep in mind that this is a really large scene here. So um, these waves are actually moving quite fast. And when you come close in, you can see that. It's simply just because when we zoom out this scale, it looks a lot smaller. Now, these are repeating. You can see this is the same sort of pattern. But we're not going to really notice that once we have everything set up the way we're going to have it set up. So for now, I'm going to hit pause. We have this now animated. And we want an object that we can add here like a plane. So we're going to go shift A and let's just add in a plane. And the plane over here, this is kind of like the world center here for now. So I'm just going to go and just select it. And let's just go into edit mode by pressing tab. We're going to right click and go subdivide. And let's just go over to the subdivide here. And let's just make that something like nine. And then we're going to go over to our object data properties. And so we can tell the modifier we're going to use to take this into account. We're going to click here on plus and we're going to go assign. And that just gives us um, so we know which verts we're working with, which is all of them in this case. We've assigned it to that group. We're then going to go over to our modifiers. We've this plane selected. We're going to add modifier and click search and type in shrink. And we're going to click on shrink wrap. And then we're going to click on eyedropper and then select the ocean, which is called cube in this case. In fact, let's just come here, double click on it and call it ocean. And let's just click on the plane and call it guide. There we go. So this is our guide plane. And we're just going to leave all of these as the default. 
And then um, this is where you can use any object that you want. So just for um, getting started with, I'm going to go Shift A. I'm just going to add in a um, Suzanne monkey head over here. And I'm just going to kind of have it hovering over here. Or I might just bring it down a bit. So lowering it in here. And I'm just going to give it smooth shading. And let's just say this is the object we want to bob. I'm also going to go ahead and just scale it up so it's bigger than the plane underneath it. Okay, so what we're going to do with this monkey head, or any object of your choice, you're going to go over to your constraints. You're going to add a constraint. You're going to go copy location. And you're going to come here to the target. You can either click the eyedropper and select the plane. I'm just going to click here and click on the guide. So the guide plane here. And we're going to come here to the vertex groups and select that group we created earlier. So now if we come through here, we come to frame one, we can see it's copying the location, which is okay, but we're losing, we don't have any rotation. So what we're going to do, we're going to go add object constraint with our objects that we want to float selected. We're going to go copy rotation. And then we're going to come over here to the target. Let's get that guide plane. Let's come to the vertex groups and select a group like so. And now, Let's go to frame one. Let's hit the space bar. And now we have this working much better. So now we have a floating object that is floating on the water. <laughs> it's really that simple. We're pretty much done with the tutorial. From here on, it really just is a matter of adding lighting materials. So let's quickly set that all up. So I'm going to select the camera over here and the default light. I'm just going to delete them so I can start fresh. Then I'm going to go into my right orthographic view. I'm going to select the ocean and go G, Y, and kind of move it so it's more in the middle. Like so, there we go. And then I'm gonna to go to my top orthographic view and I'm just gonna kind of move it on the X. So this is the top orthographic view, it's still kind of sitting about here. And then we're gonna go into our left orthographic view and in the left orthographic view, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna to go to our camera options, add in a camera. I'm gonna move the camera up and then in the front orthographic view by pressing one on the number pad, I wanna go G and just move it over here and rotate it down like so. And then I'm going to go into the camera view by pressing zero. And over here now you can see we have this. Now one other thing you can do, which I'm not going to do in this tutorial, what we just did here to the monkey head, you can do the exact same thing to the camera. You can add in a plane here, shrink wrap it, and then add the same constraints to the camera. Um, so you can get that same sort of thing happening. Then your camera will be bobbing on the water as well. But that's an unnecessary extra thing you can do if you want to do that. But now that you know the technique, you can do that. So the idea here is we now have our floating object. Now you can use whatever you want. Okay, so I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. So now let's go over to our render engine. Let's change the render engine to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under our max render samples, under the rendering, we're gonna change it to 55. Should be fine because we have denoising enabled. And then let's go um, shift A. Let's go to our light options, add in a sunlight. And I'm just gonna go G, Z, move it up. And I'm going to rotate it kind of coming off from the side like so. And I'm going to go over to my light properties. I'm going to make it something like nine or eight should be fine. Then in the camera view, I'm going to go Z and go rendered. And we can see there we have the sunlight. Now let's select our ocean. Let's go to our material properties and go to the base color here. Just make it slightly bluish kind of green. Then bring the roughness all the way down. Then go over to the transmission and give it a value of one. Now at the moment it's looking really bad and that's normal. But for now I'm gonna go back into solid. Shift A, I'm gonna to go to my mesh options, add in a plane. And let's just go S and scale this plane nice and big. Move it kind of back and then just move it down like so. Okay, and then we're gonna take this with this plane active. We're gonna go new material, call it floor. And let's just come here to the base color and make kind of like a dark kind of blue like this. So now if we go to camera view and we go Z and go rendered, We've got this and I'm going to go control B and just drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera. Now this still looks really awful. And the best way to fix this is to go over here to your world properties and come here to the color and just come and give it something like a sky texture. And now if you go Z and go rendered, um, that's looking a lot better. I prefer though to use a HDRI. So there's a website called polyhaven.com and they do free HDRI images. You can look that up yourself if you want. Um, I've already got a few that I've downloaded for free. So I'm just gonna come here to where it says color. I'm gonna change it to environment texture and I'm gonna go open and just get that from the library. But like I said, these are this is what you can do as well, but it's optional and you can always just stick to the sky texture in Blender if you want to. So now if I go Z and go rendered, 
I've got the sky in the background. Cool stuff. So now how can we make this water look realistic? At the moment, it just looks, the scale looks off. And a way to really add that scale is with a texture. So we're gonna go ahead and select the water. We're gonna go into shading workspace. In a camera view, let's go Z and go rendered. And then let's go shift A search and get a wave. We're gonna get a wave texture. Plug the color into the normal. Then go shift A search and get a color ramp. Place it here. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift A search and get a bump. Get a bump and place it over here and make sure the color goes into the height. Like so, and then come to the strength and make it 0.05. And at the moment, it's just too straight. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here to the distortion and make it nine. And we're gonna to come to the detail and make it five. And I might come to the strength and make it 0 0.01. Just want a very slight amount of that, maybe 0 0.03. There we go. And now you can see we have a much more realistic looking ocean. What I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna select my sunlight. I might just go ahead and give that a strength of five instead. And I might just select this bottom plane and make it even darker. You can mess around with that all you want, but that's looking pretty cool. And I might just select my world HRI, my environment, and just make it a lighter value as well. Um, but that's completely up to you how you wanna do your lighting. But one of the things here that is still looking really unrealistic is just the lack of atmosphere. It's just too crisp on the horizon. So what we can do is we can go over, I'm gonna do a little bit of compositing, but first we need to go to our view layer. We need to go over and enable under the passes the mist. Then we need to go over to our world and we need to go to the mist pass. And you here you can adjust where it starts and where it ends. But if you want to visualize that, select your camera and then go over to your camera properties. Then go down to viewport display and enable the mist. Now you can see where that is represented with this line. So going back to our world, we can come here to the mist pass and let's say we wanted to start at about here. So for me, that's about 12 meters in. And over here, it ends at 25 meters. So I'm gonna increase that till it ends here somewhere, so in the distance, there we go. So now, if we go into a camera view, I'm gonna also just grab my monkey and just scale it up a little bit. And I might just tab into edit mode and just rotate the mesh in this case, I'm gonna do that. So now I have my monkey and it's floating. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go render and render the image. And here we have it rendered. Let's close the render window and let's go to the compositing. Let's go up here and go use nodes. And then we're gonna come over here and go shift A, search and get a viewer node. If you're using the node wrangler, you can just go control shift and then left click on this and it'll do that automatically. But I'm just gonna take the image and plug it into here. And holding in shift and right clicking, I'm just gonna click and drag to cut these cables together. And you can press the V to zoom out or control I think, no, Alt-V to zoom in and just V to zoom out. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go Shift-A search and get a mix. We're gonna get a mix color, place it on here. And then we're gonna take this mist and plug it into the factor. And the image here should be going into the top image input. So now this over here is our mist and we can make it whatever color we want. I'm gonna just keep it at kind of like an off-white. And then if you wanna control the strength, you just need to come to the mist pass here and go Shift-A search and get a ramp color ramp, then place it on that cable over here. And now we can take these values and we can drag them around to adjust where our mist starts and ends. Okay, so I'm gonna go something like this and I'll grab this white value and just make it a little bit lighter so it's not as intense. And now you can see that's making a huge difference to how this all looks. So I'll quickly show you the difference just so you can see how much it improves this. So this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after. It's a remarkable difference and adds a lot of realism. If you wanted to go a step further, you can also go shift A search and get a lens distortion, put it over here, make it 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and then just go on fit. And now we've got a little bit of distortion here as well, in the which makes it look more like a camera. Um, and that's about it. So from here, let's go back um, to our layout. Let's go to our output. And we're gonna select the destination on a computer. Now, I would recommend you render out in PNG sequences and then just composite them together. But if you wanted to do a direct video, you can change this to FFmpeg video. And under your encoder, you can change the container to an MP4, which is what I render out in. Um, but that's about it. And then just go render and then render out the animation. Now, obviously, 
I'm using the monkey head here in the tutorial just so you, you can kind of see it, but I'll quickly show you my original over here. Exact same thing I showed you how to do. The only difference is I also added um, the thing here for my camera so it bobs up and down. But it's the exact same materials and I also just went to Sketchfab and I got this model over here. So it'll be full credit to the person who made it in the description if you want to download this model as well and use it. Um, but yeah, it's the exact same thing. Instead of the monkey head, you just add these constraints to this instead of the monkey head that you did um, or whatever object you choose. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will be uploading the final result to my Patreon. That's all in the description. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.